Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Ms. Martin. Today I'm going to talk about ionic bonding and how ions are formed. So to start off, last class we talked about valence electrons and the octet rule. When we discuss that, we are noting that all elements want to have a full outer shell, and they'll do about anything to get that, um, from giving away electrons to taking them or even sharing them, which we'll talk about next time. But today we're going to talk about elements giving away electrons or taking electrons. So we discussed that metals are going to give away electrons because they don't have very many valence electrons in their outer shells, so it's easy to get rid of them versus having to try and get six or seven to fill their outer shell or even five. Whereas on the other side of the periodic table, on the right hand side, we have all these non-metals that have five, six, seven valence electrons, and so they just are going to try and steal from other elements <laughs> a bunch of electrons to fill their outer shell, because they only need two or three more, or maybe just one if you're like fluorine. So what that does is it forms these things called ions, and all an ion is is an element that has a positive or a negative charge. So we have positive ions, which are also known as cations, and we have negative ions that are known as anions. So today in the simulation, you're going to be specifically playing around with those, and something you'll notice is that ions are attracted to opposite charges. So if we have a cation from a metal, let's say, and we have an anion from a nonmetal, because the nonmetal has taken away an electron from a metal because it wants to get rid of it, and now we have these ions that are formed, they're happy because they both have full outer shells, but now they both have a charge. So they're positive and negatively charged, and they're attracted to each other just like the opposite ends of a magnet. So what we find happening is they form crystals. They don't form molecules. They're just simply attracted to each other because of their negative and positive charges due to the swapping of electrons or the giving and taking of electrons. So when we think about ionic crystals or ionic bonds, what we see them forming is these crystals and a bunch of positive and negative ions being attracted to each other. So the perfect example of this is like salt. So sodium and chlorine come together. Sodium likes to get rid of one valence electron so it can drop down to a full outer shell, which is going to make it positive because it lost a negative electron. And that negative electron is going to be taken by chlorine, and chlorine is now going to have a negative charge because it just added an additional electron, negatively charged, to its outer shell. And now it also has a full shell, so it's happy and isn't going to do anything uh, chemically reactive anymore. And so we have sodium and chlorine here, sodium with a positive charge, chlorine with a negative, and they're attracted to each other. And when we get a bunch of those together, which is how we find them in nature, it's going to form something called salt. And so when you think of salt and it being in little tiny crystals or granules, or you think of salt granules, those are literally just ionic crystals, a bunch of sodium and chlorine ions that are attracted to each other and forming a crystalline structure. And there's a lot of other examples of this too, but that's a perfect example for us um, that we see in our day-to-day -day lives. So for uh, finishing this up, I just want to note that ionic bonds are happening between a metal and a non-metal. We've got a positively charged ion called a cation that is attracted to a negatively charged anion, which is going to be a non-metal. And they're going to form crystal structures, um, not molecules. And that is pretty much all there is to ionic bonding. So I hope you have a good time with the simulation and it makes sense and you get a chance to kind of see what it looks like in 3D and how in ionic bonding opposites are attracted to each other and that's how we get these specific bonds formed. I'll see you guys next time.